Hey Party People, ähm, wir sind mal wieder hier auf sillyhoon.com oder zur Feier des Tages mal auf 149.202.17.134, äh, dem Anarchie-Server, äh, wo nicht viel los ist. Ist da gerade Musik an? Ne, keine Ahnung, irgendwas hat da Geräusche gemacht. Äh, und es wird jetzt wahrscheinlich eine kurze Folge, ähm, deswegen let's get straight into it und zwar Aaron Jones, also schauen wir heute ein Video von Brian Clough Channel äh, von Aaron Jones mal wieder mit dem Titel Security <coughs> Introduction to Illegal ähm, Commerce Dark Markets on the Net, was? To illegal Commerce slash Dark Markets on the Net. Ähm, ja, yeah, let's go. Wir werden nicht das ganze Video schaffen, ähm, weil ich gleich Besuch bekomme. Und ja. Tor is our largest network, probably the most well-known. In general, whenever the public thinks about 
about like the dark net when they think about cyber criminals or anything like that in general people immediately go out to work that's the one that's been in the news it's the one that's been in the media that's the one that essentially shows up anytime you look online aber na ja das hat er wahrscheinlich auch in seinem talk über tor gesagt it also has the most number of known users and of course it's also super easy and very very simple to use it's not difficult to get online go to the tor webpage pick up the browser and get it up and running on your system extremely quickly. Uh, now whether or not it's effective after you're up and running depends on the actions taken by you as a user, but you can be Ooh, on the Tor network very, very quickly. In addition to that, of course, lots of celebrities, lots of well-known figures on the Tor network who use Tor. You have Edward Snowden, everybody knows Edward Snowden. Uh, you have Facebook on tour now. You have the Intercept, which worked in conjunction with Edward Snowden for getting some of his information out into the world. All well-known users of tour. Now, I want to make it clear that I personally feel that tour is a very powerful tool for good. You can use tour to make yourself anonymous. It allows you to have a voice when perhaps you may not be able to have that voice. It allows you to communicate, talk about things that you might not be able to talk about. Tor is a great tool, it's a fantastic tool. It allows you to do things on the internet that you may not otherwise be able to do, particularly if you come from a foreign country where freedom of speech is not something that they recognize. Whereas here, in general, any one of us can get a voice of political opinion, a voice some kind of opinion, and in general, we should be protected. There are places where that is not the case. Questioning is potentially tantamount to asking for uh, the death penalty. So TOR gives people a voice. In addition to that, historically, the way that TOR was developed and designed, it was originally a project created by the Navy. DARPA got involved. They started using this thing to be able to help people foreign countries either get information out of those countries to oh, us or to be able to communicate in nicht. those countries mm. and then eventually they privatized it it turned into a project that was an yeah, good, open good source project several of the original people who worked on it who were working at the navy and at darpa moved over to this open source project and uh began to contribute and it's only grown so it has a very storied history in that originally it was a tool of our government. That's what Tor was, that's what it came from. It was originally designed for individuals working with our government. And then eventually it was released into the public. People jumped on board. People realized that this thing could be used for good. And there are a lot of very good people who are contributing to this project in an attempt to make the world a better place. Now, to the flip side of that, there are individuals out there who are going to abuse this tool like anything else. You can use a firearm to feed your family, you can go hunting, or you can use a firearm to commit a crime. Regardless, it's a tool. Tor is a tool. And there's nothing inherently evil or bad about Tor or the internet or computers or anything like that. It's your choice of how you employ that tool. But remember, hacking is a business, okay? So let's keep that in mind. There are very, very few people out there in the world breaking into computers, conducting criminal operations for a Robin Hood mentality. There's something to be earned for those actions. There are people pursuing a profit from what they are doing. But let's take a step back for a moment. And I want to give you all a very important example that I feel that everybody here should know. Now, I, working in law enforcement, have an opportunity to sit down with a lot of people who, guess what, work in law enforcement. And they have experience with some of these tools. And there's something that bothers me that I have heard repeated. And I want to make sure, because I have heard that thing repeated several times, 
several times that you don't hear that same thing in your ear. And the statement is stay away from Tor because if you use Tor, you'll get hacked. Okay? And I disagree with that statement. That's not how Tor works. Okay? Pretty much everybody within this room has some kind of familiarity with Linux. I'm going to take a wild guess and say the majority of us are above average computer users. There's not very many people that have decided to spin their Tuesday cane in here who are completely new to computers. Everybody here at least knows the word Tor or you wouldn't be in here unless you just saw the word Tor and decided you wanted to see what this is all about. But for the most part, everybody in here has some sort of experience. When you are out on the regular internet, quote unquote, very specific behaviors. You make sure that when you download something, you verify the download. You make sure that you are pr practicing safe internet browsing behavior. Every single action that you take on the regular internet will also help defend you on the Tor network. It's not a, a, not a magical place where the rules change. Nothing's flipped upside down. Nobody can just, well, before I say nobody can do something, we'll get further down into the threats, because there are threats that can affect you. But what I want you all to understand is that Tor is just another tool, and you're not going to become a victim of a, a crime or a hack simply because you installed this tool and decided that you were going to surf over to Facebook. Your use of Facebook over Tor is going to be the exact same behavior as your use of Facebook. And I know some of you are looking at me like, why would you ever use Facebook over Tor? I, I can see it. Don't worry. We'll get there. <laughs> I, see some, I see some looks out there. Whatever behaviors that you're doing on the internet, they're the exact same thing. So I want to stop that, that, that statement right here. Tor is not the boogeyman. It's not going to get you. It's not waiting for you under your bed or anything like that, okay? And we're going to explore why. But we are going to talk about what it's being used for that is negative. So again, hacking is a business. What are people stealing? They're stealing credit cards. They're stealing banking information. They're stealing uh, access to PAWS, point of sale systems, okay? Uh, they want PayPal accounts. They want Skrill. They want any myriad of banking targets or payments, they want that. Uh, PayPal accounts are extremely important. And one of the reasons why PayPal accounts are so important is because of carding and the way that money is laundered over the internet. So these PayPal accounts are traded on the dark web in a manner in which somebody will gain access to these accounts verify the amount of money within the account, and then they will leave it alone. So even though they have broken into account and maybe the account says, oh, I've got $5,000. This is a, an account with $5,000 in it. They're not going to immediately remove the money from the account. It's not how that works. Okay, Anybody who does that is generally an amateur because somebody's going to reverse the charge the minute that that comes through. They don't just what they're really looking for oftentimes is somebody who's actually using their account because they're going to try to slip in transactions and move money through that account in order to make that money accessible to themselves. So on my journey through the dark net, in which I went out to gather information for this talk and find what people are doing and how they're using their accounts, the very first thing that I found on my journey was a carding site where they talk about stealing credit cards, stealing PayPal accounts, who's trading what, who has access to what, and who's moving what amount of money into what account. In addition to that, when they're done with these accounts and they've been quote unquote burned, they'll often sell access to the accounts as quickly as possible, kind of a promise that potentially you'll receive a $1,500 payout for 500 bucks. You give us $500, we'll give you an account for 1,500 bucks, you can try to clear it out if you want to, but we're done with it, we're gonna burn this. They have very strict um, rules on how they handle these accounts. In addition to that, they're also always looking for individuals who want to make a quick buck, 
Now, you'll see this exact same scam just on the clear web. Anybody here ever use Craigslist? I'm sure everybody here has been on Craigslist before. And if you've ever been inside the job section of Craigslist, you're going to see something that says, uh, looking for hardworking individuals willing to, you know, make a lot of money. And as soon as you begin conversation with these individuals, they'll tell you, what we're going to do is we're going to cut you a check, and we're going to deposit money into your PayPal, and you get to keep part of that proceeds, and then we're going to send, have you send some of that money on. Or, if it's even worse, what they're going to do is they're going to tell you, we're going to ship things to your house. You're going to gift wrap them, and then you're going to ship those on. Okay? Each one of these being scams that they're using to get you to essentially become responsible for the money laundering, for the stolen cash, or whatever it is that they're moving, and then they get products like PlayStation 4s, electronics, stuff that they can sell in their country, and then when the police come knocking, guess whose house they come to? Not that guy, it's yours, okay? It's essentially the exact same scam that's done on the dark web. Looking for somebody with a PayPal account who wants to make a quick We're going to send you $5,000, and we need you to buy some Bitcoins and send those Bitcoins to us, and then the rest of the money you can keep, and so on and so forth. Okay, Leute. Um, das war's dann mal wieder mit dieser Episode. Um, ja, das war Aaron Jones. Wir sind jetzt bei 15 Minuten und 30 Sekunden. Dann sehen wir uns in der nächsten Episode wieder.